you didn't want to see. The two teams in their huddles preparing for a penalty shootout. We saw Jonas Ardeval and his assistants making, his, making their way around the uh, Arsenal squad. Just uh, asking the players whether they fancy taking a penalty. Gilly, I think I would know the answer, but if you were in that <laughs> squad, what would you be saying? Well, you'd be surprised. I actually um, didn't mind penalties early on in my career. Um, and I used to, I'll be honest, I used to be number four or five because I wanted the glory, you know, of scoring the winning one. I feel like it's as I've got older and even more so now since retiring when I'm watching the game, I just get so nervous. They, I just don't like them at all. So... Yeah, I think, and I think it's difficult because there'll be players who, before the game, will go, I'll have a penalty, I fancy it all day long. And then you come to this point now and you ask the same players, do you want a penalty? And some might be fatigue, it could be confidence, it could be pressure. Some players just don't fancy it on the day. So credit to anybody who steps up and takes a penalty, in my opinion. Tell us about that walk then. What's, what's going through your head as you make the journey from the halfway line to the edge of the area. Can you feel your legs getting a bit heavier? Um, well, yeah, at this stage of the game, I'll probably be crawling to the spot <laughs> after extra time. Um, but, yeah, you do. You, you send... There's so many different mind games with it. Some managers say, don't don't walk or don't run. You know, the, the one, sometimes they say, walk up to the ball. They'll tell the goalkeeper, you make sure that you give the ball to your player. Um, so, and, and it's that, it's setting it down. It's sort of, do you make eye contact with the goalkeeper? I just tended to all the time just look at the ball and I always knew where I was going before I took the penalty. Um, so, yeah, I sort of, I don't know, I could say I walked up to them, there could be video footage of me running. I think I just tried to play it cool and sort of look like I owned it a little bit and that I was in control. But, yeah, sort of playing the mind games as well with the opposition of I was confident that I was going to put the ball in the back of it. Those sort of psychological things you mentioned there, like the goalkeeper giving them the ball, is that, when's that communicated? Because it seems strange to me, that wouldn't just fit into a normal tactical session, would it? No, so it's always, if you knew that penalties were going to happen, um, obviously for us it was in the uh, FA Cup when I was at West Ham and we was playing Reading in the semi-final, we knew that there was a chance that he could go to penalties. So he practised penalties that week. Matt Beard said, listen, we want the... We want our goalkeeper to be the one to give the ball to the player. Don't let it be the opposition goalkeeper because they try and get into the player's head and wind you up, etc. Um, but that was always discussed when penalties were an option at the end of the game. So it wouldn't be your standard training week in a WSL week. It would be more so if there's a game coming up with penalties involved. So I imagine as well, you'd have played with so many great players throughout the course of your career, Jilly. But there would have been some who were incredibly technically gifted, but... When the penalties came round, they didn't fancy it. Yeah, I'll talk about um, when we was at Chelsea, Ji So Young, you know, one of the best technically gifted players that I would ever have the honour and pleasure to play with, did not like penalties at all. We would, would stand there and go, I'm not taking one, would get nervous laughing about it. And then when she did take one, I think against London Bees in the Conti Cup, the first round, we got knocked out because she missed a penalty. So a player like that who is so gifted, gifted um, and talented, did not fancy penalties at all and was adamant that she wasn't taking one. Wondering what's uh, going on here then. So the Arsenal players didn't fancy standing on the halfway line. They wanted to go a bit closer. Manu Zinsberger has the opportunity to be a hero for them from the, sh uh, the spot here. Always favours the goalkeepers, doesn't it? It looks as though Paris are going to be going first. So up for them, Taya Rebeval. 26 years old. She is one of the faces of this Paris side. It's no real surprise to see her take the lead. At 26, one of the more experienced uh, figures in their ranks as well. They do have a very, very young squad. You can just see all of the fans clamouring for their seats behind the goal. You can be sure that uh, maybe one or two trying to... Uh, Put the players off. Just a reminder for Zinsberger. The referees are watching her every move. And to stay on her line before the ball is kicked. So, Frebeval up against Manu Zinsberger to kick off this penalty shootout. 
for a place in the next round of the Champions League qualifiers. And Freber Bal puts it right into the corner. Zinsberger goes the right way. Nothing that she could do about that one. Yeah, very good penalty. Calm, composed. Across your body as well in the opposite corner, but got too far into the corner for Zinsberger to do anything about it. Kim Little then, the captain, leading by example. Going up first. As Julie mentioned, quite often you see the captain go last. They want the glory. Kim will want to uh, set the tone for things and hopefully get the better of Nadozi, who really loves these high-pressure situations. The 22-year-old. So, can Little level the penalty shootout? Of course she can. Never in doubt, Kim Little into the top corner as well. Fantastic penalty. Yeah, brilliant pen penalty from Kim. You wouldn't expect anything less. And I also say as well, I know I said about I wanted the glory and being the later ones, later penalties, but the best penalty takers normally do go first as well. So that's why I was number four or five. But yeah, Kim, she's a banger. She's the penalty taker anyway. You expect nothing less from her. So a defender, another defender, the two centre-backs who finished the game for Paris, both uh, taking the first penalties. Now, Selina Ulasain is 21 years old. She didn't look too assured of her touches when she came off the bench. What can she do from 12 yards? Ulasain? Well, that's exactly what she can do. In the same place as Kim Littles. Might have even been a bit clear, uh, nearer to the corner. Yeah, it just looked like a carbon copy of Kim's, you know, top bins, as they say. Great penalty. Three flawless penalties so far. Katie McCabe, captain of the Republic of Ireland, recently shortlisted for the Ballon d'Or. Again, with the task to draw Arsenal level in the shootout. Nadozi, a very charismatic presence between the sticks, doing everything she can to psych out Arsenal's number 15. McCabe steps up, and how cool was that? Nadozi didn't move, and Arsenal draw things up at 2 all. Yeah, really good for McCabe as well. Great finish, top corner again. I'll be honest, left footers make me a little bit nervous when they take penalties. Um, but yeah, she does uh, does really well then. Calmly and confidently puts the ball in the back of the net. Clara Matteo is uh, one of the players who does have knockout football experience. She was part of the uh, France under-19 European winning side back in 2016. Can she get the better? Of Manu Zinsberger. Matteo. It's another brilliant penalty. Again, Zinsberger goes the right way. The third time in a row, actually. And again, there's nothing that she can do about the quality of the strike. These penalties have probably been some of the best penalties that I've watched. Again, hits off the post and goes in, but it's right at the in the top corner. Zinsberger can get nowhere near it. Frieda Morna, who had two very clear chances to score. First in the opening 90 minutes, the second right towards the end of extra time. He's being very precise about how she places this ball. Paris leading by three goals to two on this shootout. Three perfect penalties from Paris. Arsenal with two already. And now Mornham sees her saved by Nadozi. Harris draw first blood. It's one of those ones, I think, just Marnham didn't seem that confident coming up to take the penalty. You know, she was standing there for a while, spinning the ball. I mean, it's a good height from Nadozi as well. It's a strong save, but for me, Marnham just didn't look confident. Daphne Corboz then. French international who was born in America, played for uh, the US youth teams before 
Switching over to France. Again, making sure that the ball is exactly where she wants it to be. Zinsberger slowing things down even more. So, a chance to go. Two goals clear in the shootout. Corbos. Saved by Zinsberger. It may have even come off the post in the end, but look at the reaction from the Austrian. Arsenal are back in this. Yeah, they needed a big save from Zinsberger to keep them in the tie. It's a strong save as well. It's nowhere near the post in hindsight. It's a fantastic save by Zinsberger. Got across goal so quickly. So, pressure on Russo then to tie things up. Two goals in the game. Can she net from the spot as well? Russo for three all. Saved by Nadozi again. And you can see exactly why she's so confident, the Nigerian. She thrives in these high pressure situations. Yeah, Russo again, it's, it's a similar height to the one that Zinsberger just saved as well. And those are doing a little dance as well. <laughs> Rivadera then with the chance to put this out of Arsenal's reach. The fifth penalty for Paris. Paris. Scored a penalty at the Euros in the semi-final defeat to Germany. This one will send her side through to the next round. Zinsberger must save. And Paris win. Rivadera coolly slotting that one home. Sending Zinsberger the wrong way. And more importantly for her, sending Paris into round two of these Champions League qualifiers. A bitterly, bitterly disappointing end for Arsenal, Gilly. I felt like that was like one of the slowest penalties I just watched as well roll over across the line. But yeah, it's so disappointing for Arsenal. You know, they got back into the game twice. I was confident that once they got back into it again, that they would go on to win it. But they just fell short. You know, great saves as well from Mendozi. She does really well in the penalty shootout. But yeah, so disappointing for Arsenal. They did so well to get themselves back into the game, Arsenal. Twice they managed to uh, equalise. And you can see from the reaction of the Paris players, bottom of the screen, just look at what it means to Gaetan Tinney. A word on her, by the way, 37 years old. She was one of the two players, Sawyer, the other one, who were convinced to uh, prolong their journeys with Paris at the start of the season. There is a widespread belief that this is going to be Tinny's last season. And the Champions League is such an important competition to her. She was a huge part of the squad that were knocked out in the 2013 semi-final by Lyon. And now she has an opportunity to take another step closer on the, uh, the last dance, if you will, of her career. And Soya also in tears, the 38-year-old. Both of them were... Uh, integral for their side this afternoon it won't be any sort of consolation for Arsenal or the uh, Arsenal players watching just to uh, see how much it means to the Paris staff and, uh, and their players as well but Arsenal they didn't take their chances they didn't create enough in that first half certainly no, they didn't, and I think their their best chances. You look at the, the goals that they scored. Obviously, Beatty comes up top. Russo, because Sissoko lost the ball, um, she capitalised on that. But Arsenal, in regards to creating, they didn't create too much, you know. And I think with Paris, they they looked more of the threat as well going forward on their counter attack, especially. But yeah, Arsenal will be so disappointed.